Welcome back to my channel. I have got a really exciting video for you guys today. I've put together a weight loss meal plan for you guys and it's really customizable. There are so many delicious new recipes and snacks in this video that I'm going to show you. I'll be showing you three main meals, breakfast, lunch and dinner, as well as three snacks. I've also got an amazing low calorie chocolate coffee drink. Oh, it's so good. I'm going to show you how to make all of these recipes gluten and dairy free. I think there's only one thing that's not vegan, but I'm going to show you a vegan option for that too. You can choose any of the meals and snacks from this video to get either 1,200, 1,400, 1,600 or 1,800 calories per day. I'm going to show you how to customize it at the end of this video. Let's just get started. Each meal will be roughly 400 calories and each snack will be roughly 200 calories. I've specifically created these meals and recipes to be low in calories, but to still be filling to give you good sustained energy. These recipes are all balanced with good whole carbs, fiber, good protein and healthy fats. Just remember, even with weight loss, calories are not bad. Calories are actually really good and they're good for us. We need them every day for energy and to be healthy. It's all about the small habits that you can be consistent with over time that build up and create real results. Results. For breakfast, we are making healthy apple pie oatmeal. It's really easy to make, gluten and dairy free and plant based. First, I mix half a cup of rolled oats with one and a half cups of hot water together in a small pot. If you want extra fluffy, creamy oats, you can pre soak this for five to 10 minutes before you cook it. And if you do that, it's actually quicker to cook the oats, but you can start cooking them right away if you want to. That's just an extra tip. I'm cutting up one apple into small pieces. You can leave the peel on or you can remove it. Either one works. And I've also left a few slices on the side that I'll be using as a topping. I pre-soaked the oats for about five minutes while I was getting some things together, cutting up the apple, and the oats have gotten really fluffy as you can see. Because I did that, it's gonna cook really quickly now. Once it's started cooking, I add the chopped apple into it. And after a few minutes of cooking, the apple gets nice and soft and it's ready. It's a really nice quick breakfast, which is one of the reasons that I love it so much. It's also really nice and filling, really keeps me going. I mix half a teaspoon of coconut oil into it after cooking. This also helps to make it more filling, add some healthy fats. With a teaspoon of coconut sugar, you can use any sugar or sweetener that you like, or just leave it out if it's sweet enough for you already with the apple. Some cinnamon, and I love to add the tiniest pinch of nutmeg. To me, it makes it taste so much like apple pie, but the cinnamon by itself also just works great. Then I'm breaking some walnuts into it. I'm using about eight walnut halves. I leave one or two on the side to use as a topping and I break the rest up into the oatmeal, give it a stir and serve it into a bowl. And I'm adding those apple slices on top that I kept aside, you know, just for aesthetics, just to make it look good and breaking up the leftover walnuts on top with just a little extra sprinkle of cinnamon. If you use the amount of ingredients that I did, it should be roughly 380 calories. That leaves some room to make it 400 calories if you wanna add extra sweetener on top of that so that's a great healthy breakfast and it's a great amount even if you're trying to lose weight i really find it gives me lasting energy throughout the morning until i get to lunch i have posted this recipe on my blog for you guys at lieseljane.com if you want to check it out there i'll link that below for you the breakfast that i showed you today in this video is actually from my ebook just breakfast i created the recipes in this ebook specifically to help you to kickstart your weight loss in the morning i just feel like your breakfast sets the tone for your entire day of eating and how you move forward in your day between us i'm just as likely <laughs> to make one of these recipes from my ebook for lunch or dinner just as likely as I am for breakfast. There's more than 50 healthy low calorie recipes in it so if you're looking for some new breakfast recipes some weight loss recipes I'll link that below for you. I'm gonna show you a really easy healthy hot chocolate coffee drink that is only 40 calories. Something this low in calories is really not gonna affect your weight loss. So this is basically a free item you can add to your meal plan. That can be a little pick-me-up, a treat, or your daily coffee. It's dairy-free, it's plant-based. I add one heap teaspoon of instant coffee to a mug. I use this freeze-dried decaf one. You can use any kind. One teaspoon of cocoa powder, one teaspoon of coconut sugar. You can use any sweetener or sugar that you like. I like coconut sugar. I add a small amount of hot water and mix it up to get rid of any lumps. And then I add more hot water. I'm estimating about one cup of hot water in total. And then I add about half a cup of unsweetened almond milk. The brand I like to use is about 17, 18 calories per half cup. Just for reference, you can use any milk that you like. And that's it. 
that's the recipe. It's so easy to make and so yummy. It's a great mid-morning pick-me-up or a mid-afternoon pick-me-up. I was drinking my hot chocolate coffee outside and look who arrived. Raccoonsley, <laughs> the resident squirrel that lives at the house that I'm currently renting. She was quite interested in my drink, but I gave her a walnut in a shell as a little snack. We bought these nuts in the shells just for the squirrels. They love them. For lunch, I'm gonna show you this really yummy, healthy plant-based sandwich. It's my new favorite lunch and it's really easy to make. I'm using half a purple onion, slicing it up. You can use a regular brown onion too. I'm really into these purple onions right now. They're like sweet. Get that cooking in a pan on the stove with a small amount of cooking oil spray. I like to use avocado oil and it's nice to get the onion a little bit caramelized first. I'm also slicing up one medium red bell pepper and adding that to the pan too once the onion has started to cook. This is gonna be enough for two to four servings. So this is something I like to meal prep. And then it's a really quick and easy lunch to throw together, but I'm showing you how to make everything now. So one serving would be about a quarter of an onion or less, depending on how much you like to use, and about quarter to half a bell pepper. I'll have extra for lunch tomorrow and the next day. So while that's cooking, I'll open a can of black beans, drain and rinse the beans. I'm actually adding them to a container and measuring out about a half a cup to a bowl. I'm showing you how to make one serving, but what I usually do is make two servings at once and then I'll have the other serving for the next day. But for each serving, I use half a cup of black beans, smash that in a bowl with the back of a fork. It, it doesn't have to be perfect, just rough. And then I'm adding one teaspoon of olive oil and one teaspoon of this Nando spicy sauce. It's my absolute favorite. You can use any kind of spicy sauce that you like though. And if you hate spicy sauce, then just leave it out and you can add a bit of dried oregano. I also add some paprika, that's optional. I'm just, I just really like paprika. And some salt and some pepper and some lime juice. Definitely add the lime juice. Mix that up, it really, I know it really doesn't look that great right now, but it tastes really great in a sandwich, you will see. So keep that aside for now. I'm peeling and cutting up some cucumber to have on the side. This isn't part of the sandwich recipe, but I try to sneak some extra veggies in where I can and I love cucumber slices. So I'm having them on the side. It's a really great little thing that you can throw into this meal plan. I'm just adding that to my plate so long and I just keep tossing the vegetables on the stove as they cook. When they're done, I add some lime juice, some salt and some pepper, just a little bit. And it's pretty quick to cook like this in a pan. It doesn't take long at all. I'm serving that right into a container and I'll keep the rest of it in that container in the fridge for meal prep. I'm using two slices of bread and toasting them. This is the whole grain rye bread that I love that I always use, but you can use any kind of bread that you like. Use a gluten-free one if you are gluten-free. This bread is really dense and filling. It's about 120 calories per slice. Most breads are about 60 calories per slice. So if you have bread that's about 60 calories a slice, you can use four slices of bread. So this recipe and this meal plan allows for a lot. You're not gonna go hungry. I have to cut my bread slices in half because they're really, really big and they don't fit into the toaster. Toasting the bread is optional. I like to do that. I add some of the spicy black beans on top of each slice. It's enough for four slices of bread. And then you can use as much of the vegetables as you like on top. As I said, I use about a quarter to half of the amount that I've made. And I'll use the leftover vegetables and beans tomorrow for lunch. I squeeze some more fresh lime juice on top. It's, it goes really nicely with this. With a few fresh leafy greens, also optional, but it adds a nice touch, makes it look prettier. Add some extra greens into your diet, really easy to make. And it's even easier to make if you've meal prepped the vegetables and even the beans. If you made this how I made it, using the amounts that I used, the sandwich is around 400 calories. If you add some extra cucumber slices or something like that, it adds about another 20 calories. It's not a lot at all. So about 420 calories for what I'm having here. I'm just mentioning the calories if you want to know. A super yummy, healthy popcorn snack. I'll be showing you three different snack options in this video. All of them are roughly 200 calories each, so you can mix and match the snacks as you like. I'm adding one eighth of a cup of popcorn kernels to this microwave air popper. It takes plus minus two minutes in the microwave to pop. You don't need oil or anything with an air popper. And the air poppers are pretty inexpensive. You can get them on Amazon, you can get them online. Once it's done, I'm serving that in a bowl and adding about a teaspoon of coconut sugar. You can use any sugar you like, again, some cinnamon, a bit of sea salt, 
and then random but it's actually really good it's a good combination i added about 10 cashew nuts a really fun yummy healthy snack it takes less than five minutes to make it about 200 calories great for a weight loss snack great for a healthy snack it's got some good whole carbs in it from the air popped popcorn a bit of healthy fats and plant protein from the cashews it's a good snack for dinner we are making something really good i have been enjoying this. For dinner, we're making a Mediterranean inspired olive chicken with oven baked potato wedges and green beans. This might sound like complicated and a lot, but it's not. I'm gonna show you step by step how to make everything, and I'll also give you a vegan option for the chicken. I'm making extra for meal prep, so you're gonna see me make more, but for one portion, you'll need roughly 200 grams of potato. So just double that, quadruple that for however many meals you'd like to prep. You can cut the potato into wedge shapes or thick strips. You can cut them however you want. I'm cutting them into sort of thick wedge potato chip type things. I'm using about four potatoes to make extra for meal prep or about four portions in total. They didn't all fit onto one tray and I don't know what I was thinking. I needed a second tray. I should have just divided them equally between the two trays, but for some reason I loaded up the one tray and then I left the other tray almost empty. It makes no sense. But anyway, I added paprika, salt and pepper to season the potatoes. I'm really enjoying paprika at the moment. You don't have to add that. You can use any spices you like. Oregano is also really good. And I add that to an oven preheated to about 380 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 190 degrees Celsius. And you can bake that for about 40 to 60 minutes or as long as it needs until it's soft inside, starting to get a little bit crispy on the outside. That's how I like them. Then I'm getting some green beans ready. I'm just rinsing them and adding them to a steamer. I've done extra for Rob as well as I'm making dinner for him too. But you can do about 100 grams of green beans for one portion so I'm not putting that on yet I'm just setting that aside for now you can also use zucchini or broccoli instead of the green beans if you prefer that and now I'm making the Mediterranean inspired marinade sauce for the chicken I'm slicing up about eight Kalamata olives into very fine little pieces adding them to a small bowl and to that I'm adding about one teaspoon of oil I'm using avocado oil you can use any kind, about two tablespoons of coconut aminos or soy sauce, one teaspoon of maple syrup, paprika, again, <laughs> you can leave that out, some dried chili flakes, just a few, depending on how spicy you like it, some salt and some pepper, and you can add a squeeze of fresh lime juice too. Fresh lime juice just makes the flavors pop. You can keep that marinade aside for now and check the potatoes to see how they're doing. You can turn them or toss them on the tray if you want to and put them back in the oven to finish cooking. If they've still got a while to go, then just go do something else. Come back when they're ready. When the potatoes are about 10 minutes out, you can turn the steamer on to get the green beans cooking and you can get the chicken cooking. I'm heating a pan and adding some chicken tenders to a pan. You can use skinless, boneless chicken breast meat and cut that into strips. You can use roughly 120 grams of chicken breast meat per serving. I'm making extra for meal prep and some for Rob too for dinner. So for a vegan option, you can use extra firm tofu, roughly 180 grams. It's gonna be brand dependent on the calories. And I recommend using the cooking instructions on the brand that you get on how to cook them in a pan. You can use the same marinade sauce that I've made. What I've actually been doing is cooking the chicken strips in a pan with no oil, no sauce. This way they don't burn, but it makes the chicken nice and crispy without burning. It's, it's really good. And I just leave it cooking on the one side. And when they're almost done cooking, I flip them over near the end. And then that one side's so crispy. And then I add the sauce and then it goes really quickly because it's mostly cooked. Look at how juicy and crispy that looks. That's because I crisped them up. So once the potatoes are done, you can take them out of the oven. If you use the amounts that I recommended per portion, your meal should be roughly 400 calories. So I'm serving some for myself here on my plate and also some for Rob, but I made enough for about four portions. So I'll have some extra for meal prep too. If you wanna do the calories of this meal plan, you can use about 200 grams of the raw potato for one serving, as I said earlier. Then I'm serving the green beans and then I'm serving some of the olive chicken for each of us. When I serve the chicken out, I take some of the sauce and the olives from the pan and drizzle them over the chicken too. And if you wanna use the calorie guide for this meal plan, you'd use roughly 120 grams of the raw chicken. 
And if you did the vegan option, you'd be serving the tofu out for yourself now. About 180-ish grams of extra firm tofu, depending on the brand. What I really like to do the next day with the leftovers of the potato and the chicken is cut them up and throw them into a salad with some leafy greens, some cucumber, some avocado, olive oil, a bit of lime juice. There's so many different combinations you can do, but it adds so much to the salad. It's really good. And that's dinner. It's really filling. It's nutritious. It definitely keeps me going. And it's roughly 400 calories using the amounts that I mentioned. I've really been enjoying potatoes lately. I've been making baked fries, wedges, so much lately. So depending on how hungry you're feeling or depending on the calories you wanted to have in your meal plan, you might want to have another snack. I'm going to show you two more snack options. This one is very basic and simple, but I've been loving it so much I thought I'd include it. I've been eating a lot of oranges lately. I'm going through an orange phase, I guess you could say. I love to cut up an orange and have it in a bowl with some vanilla yogurt. It's so simple, but it, the combination is so good. I use vanilla coconut yogurt. I use either the vanilla Kalina yogurt or the So Delicious Unsweetened Vanilla Coconut Yogurt. I always go back to that one, but you can use any kind of yogurt, dairy or plant-based. I'm using a vegan one. If you use one large to extra large orange, that'll be roughly 100 calories. You can use another fruit like one medium banana or one pear. Those will also be roughly 100 calories. I've been buying these giant oranges. They're so juicy. As for the yogurt, you can use about a hundred calorie serving of whatever yogurt you use. So that's what I've served out and that's really gonna be brand dependent on the amount that you're gonna serve that's gonna be roughly a hundred calories. With the snack, you're getting some extra vitamin C, some healthy fats, some fiber, and it's roughly 200 calories. This is another 200 calorie snack or a little dessert. It's so simple to make, but it's actually quite a fun little snack dessert using very basic ingredients. We're making a mini banana split. I'm cutting one banana in half lengthways and I'm adding a bunch of toppings. So you can do either one tablespoon of almond or peanut butter and a drizzle of maple syrup, like half a teaspoon, some cinnamon, a few dark chocolate chips, or you can do the combination of one teaspoon of almond or peanut butter, a teaspoon of maple syrup drizzled on top, cinnamon, and about one tablespoon of dark chocolate chips. You can even throw a few unsweetened coconut flakes on top, like three or four, throw them on there. So if you do less almond or peanut butter, you can go crazy with the chocolate chips, things like that. If you do either one of those combinations, you'll have roughly 200 calories or just over. I've used peanut butter here and some Lily's dark chocolate chips. They're sweetened with stevia. It's a nice little healthier snack or dessert. I like to use quite a ripe banana as it's much sweeter. And that's another snack option that's roughly 200 calories. So you can mix and match these snacks as you like. I'm also gonna link below for you a free three-day eating plan on my blog. You go download it and get it there if you haven't already i know a lot of you guys have downloaded that already but if you haven't i'm gonna link below for you and you can go get it there and it's going to be another example of a healthy weight loss meal plan this one you can download and you can keep it on your phone or on your ipad or any device that you have in case you're looking for some more healthy ideas or inspiration, I'm going to link a few more things below for you. I'm going to link below for you some playlists that I've made. One of them contains a whole lot of meal plans that I've done on YouTube. They're going to be similar to this video that you just watched. I'm also going to link below for you a playlist that's going to help you kickstart your health goals and your fitness goals. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and like this video if you did enjoy it. And don't forget to turn on the notifications if you haven't already. I've got a lot of exciting videos coming out that I'm working on for you guys. I really wanna help you guys to kickstart your health and fitness goals. So turn on the notifications, stay tuned for my next video and I will see you then. Keep in mind that we're all different and so every person has different calorie needs to lose weight in a healthy way. If you'd like to follow a 1400 calorie diet, you can prepare all of the three main meals that I showed you in this video and choose one of the healthy snacks for each day. For a 1200 calorie diet, you can have all three meals each day and just leave out the snacks, but at least still have the low calorie hot chocolate coffee. I mean, it's only 40 calories. It's basically a free item. 
For a 1,600 calorie diet, you can have all three meals and choose two of the three snacks so that you'd have three meals and two snacks per day. And for a 1,800 calorie diet, you can have all three meals and all three snacks as I showed you in this video. For whatever calorie meal plan you're going for, you can add the 40 calorie healthy hot chocolate coffee as a free item. Keep in mind that something as small as 40 calories is basically irrelevant. It's not gonna throw your whole day of eating off in any way. Calories are not bad. Calories are actually really good for us. We need them for energy and to be healthy. You don't need to be scared of them. So that you can mix and match the meals and the snacks, I've made all three meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, all roughly 400 calories. Well, I've made all of the snacks roughly 200 calories each. This is a weight loss meal plan specifically for people who are trying to lose weight. It's only intended for short-term use. Long-term calorie restriction is not a good idea. And I always recommend starting with more calories per day, even if you're trying to lose weight. I try to be consistent with small habits like drinking lots of water daily and eating vegetables every day. It's really about the small habits that you can be consistent with over time that builds up and creates results for getting healthier or for losing weight. As always, it's a good idea to check with your doctor, your GP, your physician, or your dietitian to see if this meal plan or one like this is suitable for you and your personal health needs and goals. We're all different, so keep that in mind.